Hello and welcome back to Typical City. It's going to be a really tough period for Manchester City coming up. For the foreseeable future, we've got to ride the storm of all these accusations. But on the pitch, we've got an equally tough period coming up. And that's what I really wanted to get into. Because off the pitch, I think the dust, we thought the dust had settled regarding Manchester City and Premier League allegations and cheats and that tag will potentially forever follow us around now. And the morons will continue to use that because that's what helps them sleep at night unfortunately um, but those on insomniacs have their own problems to deal with and their football clubs are uh, inferior to Manchester City um, uh, for the foreseeable future it will remain that way as well regardless of these cheats allegations but it's galvanised Manchester City once again it's like the media will never learn last season 6th of February we were charged by the Premier League in 2022 6th of February that's when the charges were announced it was the weekend after we lost 1-0 to 10-man Spurs away. After that, after the Premier League charges, we went and won the Premier League, we went and won the Champions League, and we went and won the FA Cup, all coinciding with a 25-game unbeaten run. And the only game we lost after the charges was Brentford, the last game of the season, when the Premier League had already been wrapped up and in the bag. So... They've done it again. They've poked the bear. They keep poking the bear and they never learn. They keep they lost their arm last season. They got bit. This season, they've done it again. The media poke them again. Let's see what happens. You're going to get bit and lose your other arm this season. So let's see. They've done it even earlier. We're not even in December yet and they're talking about cheats again and galvanising Manchester City as a football club. But that is because we've got some tough fixtures coming up. We can use that as ammunition. Use it. You know, to to create some cohesion, batten down the hatches, us against the world mentality. And we love it. We love it as City fans. We're used to it. We're used to it. You know, it does feel like that right now. And we're going to use that as ammunition going forward. And these fixtures now, we got it, it are exciting as much as they are tough. And looking back, we've seen both ends of the pitch working for Manchester City not together really a very few times as it worked together probably the Manchester derby was the only time we saw us firing in on all cylinders in the goal scoring department and really assured defensive work we didn't really have much to actually defend against United but whenever we were questioned defensively we answered those questions this season we've seen a mismatch of City performances in, in particular games of two halves as well which is infuriating but Really assured of performances like Newcastle at home, for example. That was a 1 0 massacre. I thought we destroyed them. You know, we should have scored more chances than that, but we were really assured in midfield. Nothing came through into midfield. Rodri was on fire in that game. He was brilliant. <clears throat> Ends up keeping a clean sheet. We win the game 1 0. You could say the same against Forrest, albeit we should be beating Forrest regardless. We went down to 10, man, 10 men thanks to Rodri losing his rag. <clears throat> And getting him, uh, himself sent off. And after that, we think, right, Forrest threw the kitchen sink at us in that game. They absolutely went for it. Gung-ho, clean sheet, really good defensive performances. Then we've seen beat Bournemouth 6-1. We beat Fulham 5-1. And then you saw a combination of the two not working together. Again, Chelsea 4-4. It's like brilliant attacking quality, but really sloppy at the back. Soon, I think it's going to click at both ends because we've successfully shown we can still defend really well and we can attack really well and control games really well. We've got all departments nailed down individually so far this season. Eventually, we're going to see it all merge together and hopefully the galvanisation of City's charges can help be a catalyst to that and increase the speed in which we can start going on a run rather than it being after Christmas. Let's start before Christmas. Let's have a look at the fixtures though because next, you've got Liverpool at home. Tough. It's going to be tough. I will be doing a full preview prior to the game and sooner to the game. This isn't the Liverpool preview, but I will be doing one uh, for that game as soon as I can. The Liverpool echo right now, uh, the, the whole week leading up to this game, I've been talking about Manchester City and cheats and who's the ref going to be and how bent it is and, uh, and how City have got injuries as well. And it's a boost for Liverpool and then it's panic stations because apparently Haaland is fit and should be fit for the game. Rodri's fit because he started against Scotland the other night for Spain. So it was actually Fabrizio Romano was a source that said Haaland is fit, which is odd from Fabrizio Romano really, isn't it? Because you don't really tend to see him getting involved in the transfer side of the game. He's the, uh, in the injury side of the game, sorry, he's the transfer guru. But now he's dabbling in injuries. But hopefully, the issue for the Liverpool game is Nathan Ake. I, I, I think Gvardiol's form has dipped lately. I think Croatia 
um, their media nailed him after his performance against Latvia, really nailed him, saying he was sloppy again. And that was following his sloppy performance that City fans were witness to at Stamford Bridge. I think Guardiola's got an immense future at City. He's just hit a little rough patch, you know, a little rough patch. He'll come back. I don't think it's time to write Guardiola off at all. I think he's going to go on and be one of our best ever centre-backs. I really rate Guardiola. This is just a case of two games that he's really struggled in. The next third game in a row would be Mo Salah, and defending Mo Salah is not ideal. And I think Nathan Ake, as a one-on-one -on -one defender, could do a better job against Mo Salah. And I think this is the game where, if Mo Salah turns up, Liverpool tend to take points off City. If we keep Mo Salah quiet, Liverpool are quiet, against City in particular. They do have other players that are a threat, but against City, Mo Salah is the issue for us, because he's the, the genuine spark that can be any type of defending formations that we set up against Liverpool. But it's going to be an interesting game. Next, we've got RB Leipzig, which I think the Champions League being done and dusted right now, I think they're sort of in the way. The only issue with RB Leipzig is that you want to get through on top, don't you? You want to win the group, you know, and effectively give yourself a better chance of drawing a lesser quality opponent into the knockout stages. It doesn't always work out that way, so it might not actually be that important finishing first or second. But we're already through. Just beat RB Leipzig at home, and I think you know it's almost guaranteed that we're first as well. So then you can start looking at the future Champions League games and resting them. But after that, you come back home again to Spurs, and it's injuries for Spurs that are uh, an issue as well, uh, with Madison and Romero, who's su still suspended and will be out for this game as well, of other players at the back. They're struggling, Spurs, and they've been exposed for the lack of depth. Use that. Use that as advantage. To, to City and the voodoo of Spurs like I don't really believe in it I think they have done reasonably well against us in re recent times but it was actually Spurs we played Spurs um, in that period that I talked about last season we went 2-0 down to Spurs and I remember going onto Twitter uh, and, and reading some of the City fans what they were talking about uh, and how it was all done and dusted. City are a joke. And it was like really writing us off. And I remember tweeting, we're going to win this. We're 2-0 down at half time. We're going to win this. Come out, win 4-2. Done. You know, that, that voodoo isn't there anymore. We can beat Spurs. We can beat them. Villa away after that. That worries me more than Spurs does. Because one, it's away. And Villa are absolutely firing right now. Unai Emery has got him playing. He's got him playing. He's even got McGinn looking like a Champions League quality player. You know, I think he's a good player, McGinn. Really good player. But I, I, he's, he's reaching levels I was never expecting him to reach. Now, under Unai Emery. And you've got Diaby and Watkins, Tillemans, Douglas Louise. They concede goals, though. They do concede goals. It's been a very few times that they've actually kept a clean sheet in recent times. They lost to Forest recently, which was a mad result. So they've got a banana skin in their locker. They're capable of throwing in a surprise result. Hopefully, uh, we can use, uh, we can uh, get a bit of luck and hopefully Villa don't turn up on that day. But it's going to be a horrible, grim game. It's a hostile environment. Villa Park is my most visited away ground um, in the Premier in the country. It's that I've been there so many times, and their fans, man, they're so hostile. Both ways, you know, both ways. If City are rocking up to town, it'll be cheats, cheats, cheats. That's what it'll be. The fact that they're playing well right now will create more hostility, but they can flip Villa fans. They turn on their own very quickly. If they start playing poorly, if we put 2-0 down or 3-0 down at half-time, they'll, they'll turn on them. They'll turn on their own players, and they do it a lot, Villa fans. And I can testify to that because I've been there and witnessed it. Um... The above fixtures, really, Villa, Spurs, RB Leipzig and Liverpool, That's a, those four welcoming back Manchester City, the cheats to the Premier League, it's going to be massive. We can send a statement by, if we come through those fixtures unscathed, what a statement that's going to be to the Premier League. What a statement, you know. The, the issue with what's all of these fixtures that are coming up all the way up until January is the congestion of it all. The FIFA Club World Cup, which I'm going to get onto shortly, that's a real like spanner in the works, and I'm excited. It's a nice spanner. I want to win that spanner, but but at the end of the day, uh, it's it's in the way. You know, it creates game in hand scenarios where we're behind in the number of games that we've played, and gives a, a pressure. It creates a pressure cooker in a way. To you have to win that game in hand now because the other teams have played first and won. And you come through all these fixtures until January. If we're one, two, even three points behind first, we're massively in it. They're in trouble. The rivals that we are going up against this season, they're in trouble. If we get into January and we're eight, nine points behind, then it's title race. And still City could go and win it. You know we can go and win it. Even at that stage, if we're nine points behind, we could still easily go and win the Premier League. Not, maybe not easily, but still, we can still do it. But if we're two or three points behind come January... 
I, I think the rivals, uh, they'll be sweating. They will be sweating. Following that, there's looting away. Just don't play the conditions. You know, play the play the pitch. Play the football match. Play the, the game. The pl 11 players versus 11 players. Ignore Kenilworth Road. The fact that it's buggy and, like, it's, it's, I enjoy it as a fan. Go into these types of games, and I know City, the away fans, will testify to this as well. The City fans have been well aware, especially the ones that, like me, went down to the uh, into the mud and faced League 2 fixtures. Sorry, League One fixtures and uh, going up against really grim teams. It's fun going to these away grounds and working your way through estates and turning a corner and all of a sudden there's a stadium there. I love all that. I love all that. It's just the players. They need to get used to it. Uh, Jack Grealish, Erling Haaland, Kevin De Bruyne are all these superstars that we've got. They will be ready for it. I know they'll be ready for it. But it's just a case of you going from the heated padded seats and the luxuries of our, our changing rooms at the Etihad to probably a wooden seat and a wet towel for them all to share. <laughs> like That's the, the hospitality that we'll receive at Kenilworth Road and they have to get used to it. So I don't play the conditions, just play the football match. We should be beating them. So that's looting away. Following that, we've got Red Star away. Hostile, but if you beat RB Leipzig in the Champions League game prior to that, you can start looking at resting players in this particular fixture. Again, it'll be hostile, but we should beat them. Palace at home. We never bat a Palace. We never beat them. And when we do, it's close. You know, it's always a close game against uh, against Crystal Palace. And Conor Gallagher was a huge factor in that. And we've seen it as City fans now, first-hand, playing in a Chelsea shirt this time. He is a menace to Manchester City's midfield. And he was at Palace, that period where we could never beat Palace. You know, we always struggled against Palace. He was the, on loan from Chelsea at that time. And he was the nucleus to their midfield when we struggled against Palace. Thankfully, he's not going to be playing for them this time because he's now at Chelsea, of course. But still, they're a threat, Palace. They have quality players that can score goals. At home is the, what makes me happy. But still, really tough fixture. Following that, you've got the Club World Cup. 19th of December is the semi-final that City will face either Club Lyon or the Urawa Reds. I know very little about either of those teams. You expect City to win. After that, you've got the final, again, I'm guessing, which is the 22nd of December, but I'm guessing Fluminense is the team that we'll face. Seeing as they're the seeded team, they seem to be, on paper, the best team in the competition, bar Manchester City. I imagine it's going to be a Fluminense-Manchester City final. Guessing that, but still, the congestion of fixtures start to pile up, and you want to go and win that. You've got to go and win that. So it's full strength Manchester City. Don't rest players. Win that trophy. Then we can say we've won it all. We've won it all, and what a statement that'll be. I'd like to know if any team, and I, you know, I'm sure you're going to go and Google this after this and get in the comments and with your answers uh, to this question, but who has won the Premier League while winning the Club World Cup that season? Because it's a massive distraction. It's right in the middle of the Christmas congestion. You know, and I'd like to know how many teams have gone on to win the Premier League and win the Club World Cup the same season because it's a difficult, difficult spanner in the works, this Club World Cup. And could we be the first? I'm not sure. Get in Google, find out for me, get in the comments and answer. Following that, Everton away. I mean, we can testify to how, what galvanization it can do. A galvanized Everton. Oh, it's the proven rule breakers versus the alleged rule breakers. It's going to be a tough, tough game. The fact that it's Wednesday night, three days after we return from Saudi Arabia. We're going away to Goodison Park on a Wednesday night against the most hate, the most hateful team in the Premier League right now. They are thinking everyone's after them. They're going to be so galvanised and like ready to attack any team that comes to Goodison Park. It's going to be interesting to see how United fare going up against Everton this weekend because it's going to be big. Big. Um, not looking forward to that game. That's arguably... not. It's not the toughest in terms of the quality of team, but it's the ugliest fixture. You know that we've got in this list of fixtures. The real it's going to be grim. It's going to be grim. Goodison Park. Then after that, Sheffield United home should smash them to pieces. Really, we should be wiping the floor with Sheffield United. Um, and then following that, you've got the FA Cup protecting our crown, and that is the sixth or seventh of January, depending on the fixtures. The Premier League are entering the FA Cup, and Manchester City get the opportunity to defend their crown. I mean, it's an immense set of fixtures, an incredibly tough period that Manchester City have got coming up. And uh, one that I'm really looking forward to, an, an opportunity to prove um, that we are now galvanised. And you have done it again. The media have done it again. They've poked the bear. 
and they've woken the beast of Manchester City. And now we're going to hit our stride. All the cogs in the Manchester City machine are going to start being oiled, well-tuned and turning efficiently. And I'm looking forward to it. Blues, what do you think about these upcoming fixtures? How do you think the, the resurfacing of the cheats allegations is going to affect us going forward? Get your comments in below. I really want to hear them. Like and subscribe. Typical City is the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. This is Typical City now.